Hi guys, in my last video I built a junk DIY NAS and I enjoyed that video and a couple of you have commented on the fact that my PFSense router build was quite an expensive build, which is true. So this is my junk PFSense router build. I wouldn't really call this an instructional video, more a diary of my attempt to build a PFSense router which performs okay out of what I've got in my junk pile. So here we are in the junk room and I've got this old E6600 motherboard um, which hasn't been used for some time now and I think this might be quite a good candidate for a junk router build. So let's get it out, have a look and see what we've got. What I'm really interested in finding is a motherboard with two um, network interface cards built in if you like, two onboard network interfaces because that will make things a lot more easy. But there's a couple of other bits and pieces here. So I, as I seem to remember this motherboard has two built-in network interface cards and also a wireless card for some reason. So I've got the motherboard set up on the side of the kitchen here, connected by DVI to the kitchen TV. You can see the two network ports there and also this little wireless card that's built into the motherboard. Um, obviously it's got a bunch of stuff on it that I doubt I'll need. It's got two memory sticks in it. I'm not sure whether it's two or four gigabytes and it's an Asus P5B Deluxe motherboard and I've got this old power supply I found. Okay so next stage is to see if we can get it to boot up. I also found this little aerial I think will probably fit on the screw adapter on the side of the motherboard and I've connected it up to the power supply now and we are ready to go. At this stage, all I'm trying to do is get something on the screen to see if the motherboard's still alive, because I genuinely don't know whether this motherboard is still even workable. Now, that is something, but flashing red light writing is not normally the best sign in the world, so uh, I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board for a minute. So I'm encountering a few setbacks here. Uh, my idea of installing the operating system on a memory stick is probably not going to work because this motherboard won't boot from USB and um, I'm having a lot of problems getting the motherboard into the BIOS. This is what you get with old crappy junk legacy hardware and trying to work out uh, all of the wrinkles and problems. So this is progress here you see on the screen it looks like the motherboard is alive but I'm having trouble getting it to remember its BIOS settings. I eventually solved the CMOS problem by changing out the battery on the motherboard, which uh, took me a little while to work out. Here's a couple of old hard disks that I'm going to use. My plan now, because I can't boot from USB, is to check out these hard disks, get rid of the USB stick, use an old CD-ROM, and boot from the CD-ROM and install to the hard disks the PFSense operating system. This USB CD-ROM drive is completely useless, of course, because you can't boot from that either. And here's me with the hard disk plugged in and connected to the power supply that you saw earlier. And this was pretty much the end of day one. I'd solved the problem with the video, um, I'd solved the problem with the motherboard CMOS, but I still wasn't able to get the motherboard to boot properly and I wasn't able to get anything intelligent on the screen, so I gave up. On day two, I installed another power supply from my junk pile and this one I think uh, works much better and solved the problem that I had being able to boot the unit. So the plan was to install PFSense from a CD-ROM onto the hard drive by booting from the CD-ROM. That's me shorting out the power switch and booting up the PC. It sounds like it's working. With that problem solved though, I couldn't get past this uh, bootloader on the CD, the supposedly bootable PFSense image that I got in my CD-ROM drive. I just could not get it to make any progress, so I have to come up with a different plan. And the new plan is to give up on trying to boot into an install disk on my motherboard, go back to my main PC, and install the embedded Nano BSD version of PFSense on my hard disk using a Win32 utility. And therefore, I'd be plugging in a hard drive with the PFSense image already installed on it. And miraculously, this seems to have worked. And here's a 
greatly speeded up video of the PFSense install and the first visible sign of the PFSense kind of root menu available from the VGA output of the motherboard that we've been looking at all this time. And this menu here really tells you that your system is up and that your PFSense router is available through the web interface for access and configuration. So it's basically job done at this stage. So it's been a little bit of a painful process getting here with all this junk that I've been using. But it just goes to show that you can do it if you've got the time and patience to do it. And for free. The real test, of course, is whether it actually will work as a router. So this is a test that I ran where I connected it to my incoming internet um, ISP, connected over PPoE, and um, used the router in its rather stripped down form to provide internet access to my network. And it works great. What we'll do is we'll have a look at it and um, go into the web interface and see whether it's working as expected. So here we are connected uh, via the junk router and it seems to be working absolutely fine. I'm on my main PC here so it's connected uh, through through the junk and into the internet. Let's uh, log into the web interface and have a look and see whether we've got a fully functional PFSense router. So log in with the, the default admin and PFSense password. Okay. And as you can see, what we've got here is a fully functional PFSense router with almost no load on the CPU and hardly any of the two gigabytes of RAM being used. So uh, the capabilities here are so much more than what you get from a bog standard off the shelf um, consumer router. And all the clever things that you can do in PFSense are available to you. You can run your own um, DNS service. You can uh, do all your own web filtering. You can run Squid and SquidGuard. All the cool stuff you can do in PFSense. And let's not forget that uh, if you've got an old PC or a piece of junk PC lying around, you could do this too. And I think this video is proof of that. With a bit of per perseverance, you could get that. What you're really looking for is a PC with two network point ports, preferably Intel network ports, that can boot from USB to make life easy. And basically, you're there. So obviously, this video has not really been so much of an instruction video, more a case of, you know, coming along with me on my journey to try and turn a pile of junk into a functional router. And I think what you can see in this video, that it can be done. And yes, it took me a bit of fiddling around and I encountered some problems. But that was mainly to do with the, my choice of old hardware and what I had lying around. You could do this too. And certainly, you don't need to spend the £200 that I spent to get a really powerful and functional router. Would I swap my fully functional £200 PFSense router that you've seen in the other video for this one? No. But I would certainly consider building my own in the future and from hardware of uh, make different hardware choices on the basis of what I've learned today. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Catch you in the next one.